roll up the windows, hold your horses, hang up the phone. You use these phrases on a regular basis, but have you ever thought about what they actually mean? Roll up the window comes from a time when people literally used a hand crank to physically roll up windows, <laughs> just so you know. We don't think about this anymore because now power windows come standard in most cars. Hold your horses is a throwback to the days when horses were the main means of transportation. So to say hold your horses literally means stay here, hold your horse, and wait till I get back. Now raise your hand if you remember what the phrase hang up the phone refers to. No pressure if you don't want to reveal your age. <laughs> Phrases like these have lost their original meaning. They illustrate how much of our lives are on autopilot. We do things on a daily, even hourly basis that may have made sense at one time, but in the context of modern life, don't make much sense anymore. This is dogma. In my mind, dogma is the collective wisdom of the many generations that came before us. Think about it. Most things in our lives, from common phrases to big corporations to entire fields of study, have great inertia. They're hard to change. Dogma forms the foundational knowledge that we build upon. As time goes on, we get further and further from their original meaning and from being able to question them. People do things a certain way because that's how they've always been done and that's how they always will be done. We all know that we personally hold dogma, but we don't do anything to challenge it, and that's fair. Questioning tried and true ways of doing things is uncomfortable and scary, but I would also argue necessary. And it could lead to opportunities unimaginable by other people. Like most of us, I realized that I personally held dogma, but I didn't think much of it until I did. I want to share with you how I've challenged dogma in my own life and how it's led me to pursue innovation in ways I didn't think possible. My own personal history is one of overcoming dogma. As a child, I was extremely stubborn. Ask anyone who knew me back then, and they'll tell you the same thing. Joe always had to win arguments. He couldn't let something go without having the last word. And if I didn't win an argument, I pouted. <laughs> I, I mean, not to brag or anything, but I was the best at silent treatment. <laughs> Admittedly, this attitude came from a place of insecurity. I, there were so many things in my life that I couldn't control that if I could just win arguments, I could get around those pesky insecurities. But as I've grown up and become more confident, I've discovered that persistence is much more effective than stubbornness. Stubbornness is just an internalization of dogma. But if you want to affect real change in the world, you have to be persistent and focus on doing right rather than being right. I've taken this persistent attitude with me as I've pursued a non-traditional STEM education. I challenged the dogma that you have to choose a single major from a single school. Over the next few years at Grinnell College, my passion for science intensified, and I took classes in all the sciences, biology, chemistry, physics, math. I created an independent major in biophysics, and I enrolled in the dual degree program between Grinnell College and Wash U, where I'm now majoring in biomedical engineering. My long-term vision stayed constant, but my path to get there became more flexible. But that wasn't enough for me. I wanted to challenge dogma in a bigger way, particularly that which separates the scientific and innovative disciplines. I was so frustrated that most of the discoveries in research labs at universities never make it off the bench top. I wanted my work to actually affect the lives of people around me. Imagine dogma as a mountain that's growing very slowly. In fact, 
it's growing so slowly that you can't see it growing even if you look for it. People began building it long ago. As our knowledge base widens, the mountains get taller, the spaces between them get wider, and the dogmas become more and more immovable. So from the bottom, you have a few options. You can stay where you are, perfectly happy with the status quo. I mean, who cares what's at the top of the mountain or on the other side when we have everything we need right here? Plus, it's so safe. The problem is that at the bottom of the mountain, sometimes things happen. Avalanches, rock slides, flash floods. It's hard to know when bad things will happen, and there's not much you can do to protect yourself. The only way that you can make your situation better is to climb the mountain, look at the landscape, and try to get a better view. Because the best way to navigate the landscape of dogma is to be persistent and to have a long-term plan in mind. You know, people like to say that science and business don't mix. In my science classes, I frequently hear my fellow students saying things like, science people are all introverts. And then they complain about not being able to communicate. Some of my professors will argue that entrepreneurship is a distraction from an undergraduate education. They believe that commercialization of technology is a conflict of interest. An ulterior motive to the pure motivation of understanding the, pure, the true nature of reality. It's not uncommon to hear that students, particularly in the biosciences, must get a PhD before they can venture into industry. They assume that the skills required to be successful in industry or entrepreneurship can only be acquired through years of graduate education. And the stereotypes aren't only internal to STEM. Whenever I tell people that I'm majoring in biophysics and biomedical engineering, their eyes immediately glaze over. I know because it's the same face that I make whenever my friends in economics try to tell me about Keynesian economic theory, or my investment banking friends try to tell me about how the discount cash flow model predicts, I can never remember the rest of it. I, don't <laughs> I assumed that I wasn't able to understand what they were saying. We are speaking different languages to the detriment of collaboration and innovation. The dogma that science and business must remain separate, and that's worse yet, that scientists and businessmen can't even communicate is worth challenging. Naturally, as a scientist, I wanted to test this notion. So after years of research experience at my liberal arts college, I had return offers to continue doing research. And my, some of my professors were suggesting also that I continue. But I wanted to test the hypothesis that scientists can't do business. I knew that it would be challenging. And I knew that I would be completely out of my league. But I also knew that every time I've challenged dogma in the past, I've been better for it. So again, as any good scientist knows, the best way to test a hypothesis is with an experiment. So I began a deeply uncomfortable internship at a New York City uh, startup incubator funded by a billionaire venture capitalist. And a startup incubator is just a company that invests and supports startup companies. Uh, I'm from a town of 500 people in the boot heel. And I went to school in a town of 10,000 in Iowa. And I knew next to nothing about business. So accepting an internship at a startup incubator right in the heart of Manhattan was a culture shock. But putting myself in an uncomfortable situation was necessary for me to challenge dogma within myself and within other people. So I began the experiment by moving into an apartment in Brownsville, East New York, which is not a good part of New York City. And I, when I moved in, even before I had unpacked all of my things, I looked out of the front 
the front window and I saw a man dealing cocaine. So I called the police <laughs> who, who didn't show up <laughs> and I told the landlord who was unsurprised. I mean, admittedly, looking back, this was a bit of a red flag, but I was pretty naive, so I didn't really know the difference. So the next day, I hopped on a bus to Internatopia, which was the name that my boss gave for the internship orientation at his mansion in the Hamptons. When I tell you that I was out of my league, I, it's an understatement. We were served filet mignon, lobster, every other culinary decadence you can imagine. I played tennis with a professional tennis player who lived in my boss's house and was going to play in the US Open the next month. We learned how to go all in with a startup by playing poker with the winner of the World Series of Poker. And like a scene from a TV show on the last day of Internatopia, <laughs> CEOs from dozens of my boss's startups came out and lined up on one side of the pool, the interns lined up on the other, and dramatically, each CEO announced which intern they wanted to work with them over the summer. So needless to say, moving back to Brownsville, East New York was a bit of a culture shock. I remember the Friday after coming back, I got off the subway and I stepped on a man's foot as he was tying his shoe. He stood up and he was way taller when he stood up than when he was kneeling on his leg. <laughs> and his fist clenched and he said some really unkind things to me. <laughs> I apologized profusely and it obviously was not working. So I turned around and started walking home as quickly as possible. I turned around and saw him trailing behind me about 25 feet. I felt the sweat drip from my brow and I started running, not stopping until I felt the door close behind me as I ran into my apartment. I called my mom and told her about what had happened and she threatened to come out to New York unless I found a better place to live. And that's exactly what she did. The next week, <laughs> literally the next week, I came to work and I went up the elevator I see my whole family there. My, my mom, my <laughs> face is red from walking around in the city in the hot, you know, the hot sunlight. And just before I can ask what they're doing there, my billionaire boss comes around the corner with a bottle of sparkling water for my mom. Within five minutes, he had offered my family to stay in his Upper West Side apartment. I was in shock. How could my boss be so generous? He got to the top by challenging dogma and by building bridges on his way up. All I had to do was walk across them. It occurred to me that while not strictly necessary for innovation, inviting others to cross the bridges that you build is how you build a legacy. Innovation happens when you find new mountains to bridge. And if your bridges are strong enough, you can invite others to cross with you. And this is my challenge to you. Step out of your comfort zone. Challenge whatever dogma is in your life and take risks. You can climb the seemingly insurmountable mountain that represents whatever dogma is in your life. But remember that inviting other people to cross the bridges that you build is one of the most meaningful projects you can undertake. Don't get me wrong, bridges are scary. I'm scared of heights, so I get it. But my boss hired me because I thought differently. As a scientist, I possess different skills than the thousands of other business and marketing majors that were applying for the same internship. He built a bridge between science and business. Now that I've been to the top of the mountain, the bottom of the mountain and everywhere in between, I'm reinforcing bridges of my own between science and business as I've founded two biotech startups, one that is regenerating muscle loss following traumatic injuries, and the other that's helping patients taking IV medication at home remember to take their medication. And this year I've 
begun another project to wirelessly power wearable devices by sending electricity through the skin. If we're successful, we can give mobility and quality of life back to people who desperately need it. We can reduce unnecessary medi medical waste from unplanned readmissions and from antibiotic resistant bacteria, and we can enable next generation wearable devices with this new wireless powering modality. Now my mission is to build bridges as others have built them for me. My boss made it so much easier for me to understand that challenging dogma is not insane. So no matter your position in life, persist through the uncomfortable challenges Climb the mountain that represents whatever dogma is in your life, but remember to invite others to cross the bridges that you build. Thank you. <laughs>